Good morning, everyone. Welcome to this session on Brandy SharePoint 2010. My name is Eric Overfield. I will be our guide for our next hour as we look at the process and abilities we have in Brandy and SharePoint. This is, as I said, an introductory session to Brandy SharePoint 2010. Uh, I am assuming that you have some knowledge of SharePoint, but I'm not assuming that you have any knowledge in branding SharePoint. Uh, I'll be going over some beginning demos all the way to some advanced demos. So if you don't know, have knowledge of branding, this still may be a good session for you. I'm going to show you different techniques of working with SharePoint branding, um, including how to use uh, a browser. We're going to be using IE9 in this. I'll also show you in Firefox to do some branding as well as using SharePoint Designer 2010. The demos that I have here are going to be showing you ways you can work with Branding SharePoint if you have no HTML knowledge at all or no web editing experience, but uh, we will be going into more advanced examples as well. So if you already have abilities of working with HTML or you have some web editing experience in the, in the past, we'll show you some other techniques, some more advanced techniques that you can use to brand your SharePoint site. Uh, we will not be using Visual Studio here. Um, I find that Visual Studio is difficult when debugging designing, so we'll be doing everything in SharePoint Designer. Yes, Visual Studio is great for packaging up branding uh, for deployment, but I think that in debugging, um, it, it's a lot easier to be using SharePoint Designer. I'll also be recording this session as well as making this presentation available to you. This is a very fast paced. I have a lot I want to cover, so I'm going to be going very fast. I do apologize. Take what notes you want, please. But also be aware you're going to be able to get this recording online so that you can watch it as many times as you need to uh, as we go over all of our demos. So our agenda for this afternoon, this morning. A uh, quick introduction and session overview. Basically, I got over the session already. Uh, we'll then go into what is branding in general. We'll look at then branding options available to us in SharePoint. And finally, the, the heart of this presentation, the heart of the session for you, is actually how do we apply that branding to SharePoint. I've got a bunch of demos set up so that we can actually see how is this actually done. I geared this talk towards what I would like to have seen years ago when I started branding SharePoint, which is where do things go? How can I do it? What's available to me? Please just give me some demos. So it's heavy on demos. I've pre-built most of the elements in the demos to save time. I just don't have time during the session to show you how to actually build the elements. We're looking more on how to where elements are placed. Um, all of the examples that I'll be, uh, all the files and all the assets that will be used in the demos will be, in a mate, will be made available for the session as well so that you can actually download them, apply them to your own SharePoint testing environment, development environment, and follow along in the, in the demos so that you can actually see if you want what's in those files and how to actually make things work. So who am I? Again, my name is Eric Overfield. I work with Pixelmill. Uh, Pixelmill is a SharePoint branding and UI company. Branding is my day job. I do enjoy it. It's a lot of fun. I hope that uh, you'll find the same uh, joy and experience, I think, out of Brandy SharePoint. It, 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 I can find it to be a lot of fun. I've been working with SharePoint for quite a while. Uh, my background before SharePoint, though, was uh, in general web design. That's um, where I came from, located in Davis, a great place in the middle of California. And my blog is available where I blog mainly about branding SharePoint. And my f emphasis is more on UI, but branding and UI go hand in hand. So very similar. So what do we mean when we say branding? Well, we all know what branding is. Um, even if you don't really know the, what the, the word branding is, you, you know what it is. Uh, effectively, branding a business, it's applying your corporate identity to your product or service. There's a whole historically what it, what it comes from, but effectively it's, it's creating, it's applying your identity, your organizational identity to your product or service. Uh, this is often used in the realm of ad agencies who may help an organization build that identity uh, with their logo, their colors, their slogan, etc. Branding is creating your image in front of your end user, whoever that may be. When we look at branding and how it, it interacts with the web, what, what we do with branding on the web, what we're attempting to do is provide a unified experience between web and non-web interactions. It's not just applying your brand or your identity to a web, which you know, may be your corporate design guidelines to your actual website, but what we're trying to effectively do is create a unified experience for your end user, your customer, your end user, whoever your organization is trying to work with. Maybe it's just your own internal company, that's fine. But you're trying to create a unified experience for your, for your user. Uh, I think in a sense, branding in the web, branding, how it's applied to the web, is kind of a fancy word for web design. We've been using web design since the 90s. Uh, it's applying your look and feel to your site. 
via your logo, via your colors, your layout, your image, etc., applying that to a web design. So if we look at a quick example, take Coca-Cola. We all know Coca-Cola, famous brand. Got their logo, applied to the web. There you go. It's their image, it's their look applied to a website. It's what they're trying to do, not only off web, but on web. So why do we go about branding SharePoint? What's the point of actually branding SharePoint? It comes out of the box with a look to it. What's wrong with that look? Well, let's go ahead and look at that. This is a standard SharePoint team site, straight out of the box, just applied. My question is, does this reflect who you are? Does this, uh, does this represent you as a company or as an organization? When your user, whoever it may be, uses a site, are they going to know or have any idea that this is, in fact, you and your site? How about now? This is the uh, night and day master page that's applied in SharePoint Standard and SharePoint Enterprise and whatnot. It's a little nicer and all, but again, does this really represent you? Does this, rep does this reflect who you are? So we have a good reason to brand SharePoint being, well, let's make the site look not out of the box, make it look like you. But what can we actually, what can branding accomplish when you're trying to get buy-off from, from corporate or whatnot? What is it that branding is actually able to do for you? Well, primarily I would say that it goes ahead and it helps identify who you are, what your site is, so that customers know your site, so that your end user knows that, yes, I'm in fact at the right site that I want to be. Also importantly, we're looking to create a consistent experience between, say, your, your public internet site and your intranet site or your, your team collaboration area where your team may be working with, uh, maybe working together on your intranet site. We're trying to create, branding can help us create a unified experience there between your, uh, between your say, your public internet site and this, uh, this private one, the intranet site. I think the primary reason we go, how we go about branding SharePoint, though, is to help drive end user adoption of your SharePoint site and all the time and effort put into actually creating your SharePoint site. Uh, user adoption can be a little tough with SharePoint and uh, oftentimes SharePoint is considered a bad name, it's considered a bad word because it's, it can be a little difficult to use and whatnot. So by branding we can help drive the end user to actually be using your site. How? Well, we can improve the user experience for sure. Out of the box SharePoint is not overly useful. It has a kind of it's a big slate ready for you to do stuff, uh, not only putting data and content and, and roll-ups and et cetera and web parts and whatnot into your SharePoint site, but we can uh, use branding to help make your site more useful. Branding can definitely help make your site more personal, so it's not just out of the box. Uh, it's designed around your end user. It's designed around whoever it is that's going to be using your site. As I said, SharePoint can be intimidating, and I find that, that customers often come to me and say, well, we can't use the word SharePoint. The end users won't like that, so what can we do to make it not look SharePointy? and, uh, of course, leverage the power of SharePoint and help remove some of the intimidation that end users may have. And branding can definitely help us do that. During our branding initiative, uh, it's often a great time to improve features. Say, a popular one would be your mega menus, your drop-down menus at, the, at your top horizontal navigation. Very popular now to have a big drop-down with, with lots of links available to the user. The idea being that you want your users to be able to find something in less than three clicks, or they're going to split, they're going to go somewhere else. Great time to work with uh, work work on proving some of the features in SharePoint would be during the branding process. I then find though the branding though what key point what we're trying to get at here is that when you brand your SharePoint site, it could be the difference between your end users being indifferent about using your SharePoint site or not ever using it again to actual excitement and engagement. Let's face it, prettiest pictures it wins the funding. That's what. I've, it's a direct quote from a customer that came to me and said, well, my boss likes things that sparkle. So it just seems to be the case. I'm going to try to sum this up. I'm going to paraphrase Jacob Nielsen. Your SharePoint site, it's going to be perceived in the context of ever-evolving external websites and applications that your users are ending on every, every day. When going from the web to your SharePoint site, from the general website to your SharePoint site, you want your, your users not to feel like they went from driving a 2012 Porsche Carrera GT to a 1995 Geo Metro with faulty brakes. Your customers, your end users of your site are going to be expecting a certain level of interaction with their site if it's a current useful modern site. If it doesn't have that, your users might just think it's not worth their time. They're going to go somewhere else to get the information they need. So we know we need to brand SharePoint. What's available to us? Well, SharePoint provides very specific ways in which we're able to apply a brand. Um, it's, it's 
similar and different than a lot of other platforms out there. We can easily and definitely apply our logo or theme, uh, or both, of course. Uh, a theme would be your, your colors, your, um, your fonts, etc. Getting more advanced, going into a more intermediate type of uh, engagement into branding SharePoint, you can create your own custom CSS, which is really nice. They have a nice, easy way of creating a, your own custom CSS file where you just override uh, some of the look and feel of SharePoint to provide more customization, yet at the same time not needing to know way too much about how SharePoint branding needs to be applied. When we look at more advanced techniques and, and more time-consuming techniques, we can start creating our own master pages, which would be our general page layout. We'll look at that in a second, as well as create our own page layouts, which is our content areas, so we can control how and where content gets displayed on a given SharePoint page. Getting really advanced, we can start looking at adding our own JavaScript, or jQuery is a popular way to create a unique site behavior. If you want sites to interact with the user um, a little more dynamically, we can definitely use something like jQuery to, uh, to make that happen, and more, which would be things like web parts and uh, custom XSLT, et cetera, uh, to provide new branding opportunities or to provide a, a different look and feel to how your SharePoint site works. So if we now start to look at some of the elements of how a SharePoint site is put together, how SharePoint page is put together. Let's go ahead and take an example here. We've got a out-of-the-box team site. Again, standard stuff. Uh, if we look at the master page, here shaded in purple, uh, that's generally your, your general site elements like your ribbon, your top header, uh, your top navigation, your top horizontal navigation. Uh, normally it's defined, uh, that's where your, your quick launch or your left links are going to be defined as well as your footer and any sort of gutter or major background, which is kind of the idea of the whole outside is ringed in purple. We now start to look at our content, shaded here in yellow. We've got two major layouts that we can work with in SharePoint, depending upon uh, if you have publishing enabled or not. Of course, publishing is only available in enterprise server or um, standard enterprise, etc. cetera. Um, if we're only on foundation or we we're on a server, but we have a collaboration site that doesn't have publishing enabled. We're stuck with the wiki layout. It gives us far less control over our, the layouts that are available to us, but it's still customizable. Moving on, we can start to look at what the theme looks like. So we already knew what the out of the box is when we apply a theme. There we go. So we have same layout, of course, because we're just able to change fonts and colors. So we can see some background colors on the header and the quick launch were changed. If we start to look at what we can do with uh, custom CSS, custom master pages, our own images, background images, JavaScript, etc., we can take this site. Nothing's going to change except the layout. There we go. Completely unique layout, uh, centered fixed width, gutters on the outside, header, footer, etc. That's what you can start to do with, um, with more complex, uh, with more time, more complex um, updates to your, to your branding. So we know we want to brand SharePoint. We see what it can do. Well, now what do we do? How are we actually going to get started with branding our SharePoint site? Well, we first got to determine uh, what your goals are and what your expectations are. What's your end? What are you trying to accomplish? And how do you know when, you're, when you've accomplished it? Very difficult, but definitely one of the first things you really have to do. Once you have an idea of what your goals may be and expectations are during this process, you're going to need to go ahead and build your team. You've got to put together a team uh, that's going to make this happen. The team may be you. The team may be you and 10 other people. It, it, it really de depends on what your goals are. With that team, though, you're going to want to make a plan as to what you're going to do with your SharePoint site and what your site's going to have in it, what features you may have. Uh, more features, normally, equals more time. Uh, your team and your plan are going to be based around your goals, of course. So you'll, uh, depending on what your goals are, you may need more time, you may need more people, etc. What we find is normally the more experienced the team with SharePoint, definitely usually faster, not always too many chefs in the kitchen can spoil the stew. But typically you'll want more experience if you can definitely find it. And during the time or while we are building our, our, our plan and our um, goals and we're understanding who our team's going to be, uh, we're going to start to look at gathering our site requirements. This typically happens after we have a, a, a team together and a general goal set together because it's really difficult here. One of the first things you've got to do is you've got to talk to your end user. Very few people seem to do this, even for an intranet, internet, extranet, et cetera. You need to talk to the end user who's going to be using your site and find out what it is they actually want to do. Well, what, why are you building this them site? Why are you building them this site? And only they can really answer that for you, right? Only they really know what it is that they need to do with your site. It's really difficult to do, and definitely it's an important step that too many people forget. Once we have some ideas of what they're going to want to do with the site, we have our team, we have our plan, et cetera, 
Next step that I would, would recommend is we need to figure out what kind of site templates you're going to be using um, because there are different ways in which you can brand SharePoint depending on what site templates you are. Site templates being, of course, collaboration, say, uh, team sites, etc. Or if you're using a publishing site because it's uh, an internet site and you want to have a place you can be publishing a lot of content or a combination of the two where you've got your public, you've got your, uh, your large internet site that's going to start with publishing then it's going to have team collaboration in it. Or are you going to have search? You're going to have my sites, etc. All of these re can require different techniques of branding or d different amounts of effort needed to brand them. You'll want to definitely have an idea of what that's going to be. You also want to know how much effort do you actually plan to put into this being, and also how much time do you have. If you only have a day to do something, you're going to be much more limited. But maybe you've got three months, but you can only spend 10 hours a week on this. Depending on how much effort, how much time you want to put into this, that also will dictate, most likely, what you have available to you, what options you're going to have available to you. There are multiple ways in which you can brand SharePoint, even though that's, it, it, it's, a, it's a defined set, but there are definitely multiple ways you can do it. How you're going to end up branding your SharePoint site, uh, it's going to depend, up to me, I would say, on are you using foundation or server or both. Um, being that server mainly, mainly meaning publishing sites or enterprise wikis, etc. If you're going to be using only foundation, there are less options that you have available to you than if you're using server. If you have server, but even without publishing enabled, you still have more options in branding foundation. As I said before, what site templates do you plan to use uh, will be important in your branding effort, um, depending upon you know, how much you want to do. And then, as I said, time requirements, uh, when's this due, and how much effort and how much time can you actually put into this. So let's get into our demos. Let's get into what I think it is, why we're all here, is to see how do we actually do all this stuff. We'll start at the basic. We'll start at the beginning. Minimal effort. Let's say you need something right away. What, can, what do we have available to us? Well, luckily, thankfully, SharePoint was designed, I think, pretty well. There's some useful out-of-the-box options that are available to us where you don't need to know any coding. You don't need to be an HTML expert, uh, nor do you need to work with SharePoint Designer because, hey, maybe you just don't like web editors. You don't understand it. You don't know it. You just need to do something quick to make your SharePoint site look more like you, look more like your organization. Easy things we can do. We can change the logo extremely easily, which is really nice, all done in the browser, very simple to do. The second thing we can look to do is we can apply our own theme, which would be our own colors and our own fonts. So pretty important there. At least we can start changing the color scheme to start to look more like our organization. Now there are many out-of-the-box themes uh, available to us when share, with, with SharePoint, which is really nice, but you can also build your custom theme. This is one of the really nice things about SharePoint 2010 is it's built using the Microsoft Office theming engine. So this is awesome because we can use a product, any Office product really, but a product like SharePoint, uh, PowerPoint, excuse me, uh, to create a theme. To create a theme that has all of its colors and have all of its, uh, has, our, um, has our fonts all set, we can then save that and we can upload it into SharePoint. We can also build a theme in the browser. I'm going to show you how to do that, but I don't recommend it, and I'll talk about why when I get to there. All right, so let's see all this in action. Got a little story. So IT came to us and said that we've got, they just created a SharePoint site for the internet, and uh, they've got to show it to the boss in an hour, and it needs to look more like our corporate identity. So all marketing could give us was a logo, and that was it. So they want to see what can we do by the end of the day. It needs to be done right away uh, just to make the SharePoint site look a little better. So we really don't have much time. We have to use the minimal effort available to us. Let's go ahead and do that, which would be let's get our logo applied, and then let's try to change the colors of the SharePoint site to at least match uh, more of our corporate identity. Okay, so let's look at the assets that were given to us. So I said we got a logo. That was it. So the first thing we'll want to do is we'll want to put this into SharePoint. Uh, here's our SharePoint site. Now, any branding element, I always recommend going to uh, the root of your site collection into the style library. Um, the style library is created by default for SharePoint for you, and that's typically where um, all branding elements are supposed to go, to be honest. You also have things like the uh, publishing images, or you've got an image document library, etc. I just don't recommend putting any images for branding there. Um, that's not really what it's for. So logos, part of branding, let's put them in the style library. Easiest way to find them in the browser, you go to site actions, go to view all site content, that will take you to the, um, to the root of the site. And uh, when that comes up under document libraries, you'll see style library. So we click on that. By default, you won't see all these options here, uh, all these different subdirectories. The ones that you'll probably see by default will be images, uh, media, player, 
um, and the XSL uh, style sheets. That's probably about it. But since this is an image, we'll go ahead and put it in the images folder. Now within this, any of your branding elements, I always recommend that you put a particular branding initiative into its own subfolder or subfolders within a specific directory. What that means here is we're in the images directory. The logo is an image. So instead of just dumping it in here, I'm going to create a new directory called custom minimal, which is where all of any minimal efforts, you know, where any elements for the minimal effort, of which there's only one element, the logo, would be put. And we'll see, you kind of, there's another demo directory already there. Let's go ahead though and we'll add our directory, go to documents, go to new folder, custom minimal. We'll hit save. Once we are in there, we'll go to that directory. We will then go back into documents. We'll upload a document because we already have our logo. Browse for it. Logo. Okay. Okay, so this is a, this demo I have is on uh, SharePoint Standard. It's a publishing site. Um, so we have publishing enabled, which means that we have to be able, when a file is at, added, an access, a, a, when a file is added to uh, SharePoint, and asset is added to SharePoint, uh, before anyone else can really see them, they need to be checked in, um, submitted for approval, and published and whatnot. So we would want to go ahead and check this file in so that we can go ahead and get it approved and actually published. If you're on foundation, uh, this would not be the case. You just click on save. So I'll click on check in. Now when it's checked in, we now need to publish it. So we will publish a major version. And we'll hit OK. And there we go. That's all there is to it. So we've got our asset up. Now we need to actually link to it. Go back to site actions, site settings. The site settings page is a very common place to be. It's kind of where your home will be when you're doing a lot of um, working within SharePoint. We probably already know this. With any site, subsite, et cetera, you're always going to have a title, description, and icon link under look and feel, the look and feel section. Uh, icon is what SharePoint kind of considers the logo. It's that this little icon, up, this orange icon up here. So we will go ahead and change that. Now it's the lo logo URL and description. So we need the URL. I've created a little helper doc so that I don't have to remember the whole directory path. So what we're seeing here is the style library, that images, and the custom minimal directory that I created, and then our logo. That's all there really is to it. It's pretty simple. Boom. Our logo's in. That's not hard, right? Very, very simple. No reason why everyone can't do that. So the next step um, is we're going to want to add a theme. Under look and feel, you always have a site theme. Again, any site collection or subsite would always have a site theme or theme link. We'll go ahead and click on that. Now, by default, we're going to see a bunch of themes available to us out of the box. These are all uh, themes that, that your SharePoint installation should come with. If you click on them, you'll get an idea of what the link of what the colors are. Um, so let me go ahead and quickly describe this, although I'm going to go quick again. So you might just want to go search for um, how the Office theming engine works to learn more. But effectively, you have four primary colors. You have a dark one, a light one, a dark two, and a light two. You select these four colors. SharePoint or the theming engine actually creates all these other shades for you. The next six are accent colors. They're just accent one through accent six. Uh, you also can set the color for your hyperlink and followed hyperlink, as well as the fonts for your header font or and a body font. We can now see the, uh, we can also see what I just said down here. You've got your dark one, light one, dark two, light two, your, uh, your other colors and whatnot. Now I'm going to go ahead and say I like this. I'm going to make sure at the bottom here is one of those gotchas. Uh, if you want this theme applied to this site and all subsites, you would want to apply this selected theme to all subsites. So we'll click OK. Now what's happening now is SharePoint is uh, creating custom style sheets for the site and all subsites um, that uses the theming engine. And there you go. So now we've got our theme colors. Good to go. Now let's say this is good but not quite right. We want to change a color or two. How could we do that? I told you we can make modifications to a theme in the browser. I went back to theme. Now all the colors here already specified for us, already shown for us. But let's say that we know that this, this turquoisey color is not quite what we want. This is where it can get a little tricky is where is that color exactly coming from? So we kind of have to guess, but we can look here that it's probably going to be one of these light colors. We can kind of tell it's one of these, that the turquoise is really one of these light colors. So what we could do is say, well, we want to change that. So we can select a color, and you now have your color wheel available to us where we can choose different colors. Or if you knew the RGB values, you can go ahead and just put it in. I'm going to make this ugly just so to make a point. I'm going to make it red. Um, we can now see that it was automatically updated for us. I'm going to go ahead and apply this to everything again and click apply. And we're going to see probably a pretty ugly looking site. But for demo purposes, it hopefully will help show you what this all looks like. There we go. Pretty nasty. But 
hey, that's what's going on. Okay, so we applied a theme, great, but you know, we really want to create our own custom theme colors. Um, and uh, easiest way or the best way to really do that, to save it, is, is to use an Office product like PowerPoint. So I'm going to use PowerPoint uh, 2007 to show us how to do that. One thing, though, I did show you that uh, we can't create our own custom theme within the browser. The problem is you can't save it very easily within the browser. Um, so what you might want to do is debug. If you're going to use a theme, is debug the coloring until you get it right, then take those colors and move them into PowerPoint, which is what I'll show you how to do now. So if we open up uh, PowerPoint here, if we go to the Design tab, then what you find is a bunch of themes actually created for you, but let's say we want to go ahead and create our own theme colors. If we click on Colors, we'll get a whole list of theme color sets available to us, but we want to go ahead and create our own. So we can create our own theme colors here, and we'll see the same exact color chart that we had before. We've got our darks, our lights, our accents, our followed, etc. So you can go ahead and change these colors you see fit. You can select them however you want to select them. You can use the color wheel. You can go to custom. You can give them RGB values again, etc. and set all the colors that you may want. Then you can go ahead and save that. I'm not going to do that right now because I've already got it set up. We can do the same with fonts. A lot of different font sets that are set for us already. We can look to see what those look like. We can also uh, create our own theme fonts. Now, something you want to be aware of here is you need to use WebSafe fonts, or I highly recommend it at least. WebSafe fonts are, are things like um, Arial, New Times Roman, Verdana, Tahoma, Comic Sans, etc. If you go to Google, type in WebSafe fonts, uh, you'll get a whole list of what they are. And the reason why we use WebSafe fonts is because we want in Brandy, we really want users to see the same site no matter if they're using Safari or they're using Chrome or they're using Macs or they're using PCs, etc. And WebSafe fonts are fonts that work reasonably similar, similarly uh, between different browsers and different OSs. Something like if you said, well, we really, will, really wanted to use Brush Script Standard, uh, most browsers aren't going to be able to view that right, and that's just going to cause you problems. So I wouldn't recommend you do that. We can go ahead and save that. Once we have our colors already set we can then and font set, we don't need to worry about effects that are not in SharePoint, uh, we can go ahead and save this. And this is where the, the hard part is, which is really still simple. Click on our little magic, uh, our magic button up here. Go to Save As, and what we're going to do is save this file as a Office theme or a THMX file. That's actually all there really is to it. Just name it, save it, there you go. Now I've actually already saved one, which um, I've already shown you, but I will show you again. It's this custom minimal bot.thmx. So now what we want to do is go ahead and upload this theme into our SharePoint site. Very simple. We're back at the site action, page, site action page already. You do need to go to your root your site collection. And in our galleries, you're going to see themes. So if you go to themes, you'll see a list of all the themes that are available to us. These are all the same ones we just saw, but we want to add our own. So we just go to documents. We can upload a document. And we will upload the custom minimal.thmx. There is no need to check this in. It's already actually checked in and available for us. So now we can go ahead and apply that and get rid of this kind of nasty red that I picked. So if we go to site theme again, we will now see the custom minimal. We'll see the colors that were already pre-selected. We already have our new font, so we'll go ahead and apply this to everything. And there we go. Simple as can be. We got our own theme created. Uh, that matches our logo, our logo's updated, and we now have a branded site. I'll admit, it's not the greatest, but hey, it's better than we had before. So we've seen what we can do with a minimal effort. What can we do with an intermediate effort? Well, what I talked about here is that um, the next step would pro probably be creating an alternative CSS file where you apply your own CSS properties to everything out of the box SharePoint. Uh, you might also be making a simple master page, or you'll be making slight modifications to a master page in, in case you need to maybe move an element around or something. But in general, we're not building a full-blown custom master page or adding too many background images, et cetera, using, uh, or making too many ma major changes if our inter intermediate kind of changes. Um, this would be something like a semi-custom site. Typically, you're going to need a little bit of web experience because you will be working with style sheets. So you're going to need to know how to either work with a style sheet or know basics of styles or how to find styles, et cetera, what, what I mean by styles. Uh, knowing HTML will help as well in case you need to make a custom master page. Um, and then, again, we'll probably be using SharePoint Designer here to help us make some of the changes uh, if we're going to have to make our own master page. I do want to say if you uh, are going to create your own master page or create your own files, I'm going to say this a few more times. Never override anything out of the box with SharePoint. 
Uh, that would include the v4.master or the core v4.css, the primary master page or the primary CSS styles that are provided by SharePoint out of the box. I'll get into that more why later, but I do want to make sure I say it because it's one of those big things. You, I just, please don't ever let me see you do that. I just don't want to run into a project that you're doing and see you've overwritten the out of the box files. So what's, our, what's the story here? Well, uh, the boss liked what they saw and said, great, SharePoint site looks excellent. Their content's what we want. You know, it looks good, but we, we can do better. Let's go ahead and put a little more time and effort into it. It's really popular, and we really want to have a center fixed with site. We want to have uh, the design of the site to look a little better, you know, a little more modern. And, but we just don't have too much time. And the other thing is that we want, we might need to apply themes to uh, different color schemes to, our, to the design that we're going to update later for maybe subsites or subsite collections, et cetera. And so we want, the, we want any updates we make to still be themable. We still want the theming engine to still work. So let's see what we can do there. Let's first look at the assets that are available to us here. Uh, here we're going to have a custom uh, master page. This is basically the v4 master with just an extra container or two because we want the centered fixed width. Very simple. Um, you can download this later and see what I did there. Images are the same. We just have a logo. There's scripts that are being added. Uh, the reason why is there's a little tabbed interface that, uh, that is needed um, by the IT really wanted. And so we use a little script to do that instead of trying to do it purely in uh, CSS. Very simple, though. Um, and then in the themable, what we have here is a style sheet, which is just a couple hundred lines of styles. Um, I'll quickly get into that in a second. So let's go ahead and get all these assets up into SharePoint. We showed how to do it in the browser. This time, I want to do it in SharePoint Designer. So SharePoint Designer, I've already got the site open. Go down to All Files, and what we want to do here is we're going to go ahead and add all of our style stuff, all of our branding elements first. So I said before, it needs to go in the style library. If we scroll on down to All Files, we see it, Style Library. This is the exact same folder that we saw a few minutes ago in the, uh, in the browser. So let's go ahead and add the images first. We'll go into Images. We'll see that, hey, there's our custom minimal and already another directory, but we need to create a new folder for custom intermediate. So we'll right-click. Click New, Folder, and we'll call it Custom Enter. And we'll go to that file, go to that directory. And we now just need to copy our logo there. Again, we're publishing, so we get a little check mark here. That little green check mark means that this file is checked out. It needs to be checked in and published for it to be available. Again, Foundation, no worries, it's already ready to go. So I'm going to right click, Check In. I want to publish a major version. And although you didn't see it change, this, it, it did get checked in. The reason why we're seeing it sort of weird is because um, this, this site is used for other demos. I have some permission issues changed. So the check-in doesn't really work properly in SharePoint Designer. Uh, if that check mark doesn't disappear for you, um, you have a problem and you'll want to talk to IT about it. But uh, let's just assume that it did get checked in because it will still work just fine for us. All right, so let's go ahead and add those scripts. I've already already done that because we just saw how to copy and paste, but there's a custom inner, and we've already have our two files here checked in. And we'll do the same thing for themable and then custom inner. Now, good question people might ask is why did I put this in a themable directory? Why did I call it themable? The reason why is if you create a style sheet that you want to be able to be themable, it needs to be in a themable directory, a directory named themable. Now, you can have it in a subdirectory within a themable directory, but it must be in a folder named themable. Another valid location for that would be your language or localization and then themable. So this is uh, English US and you'll see a themable directory here as well. That would be another valid location for a themable style sheet. If I just placed it here in the style library or I placed it in a scripts directory or a CSS directory, it would not be themable. Even with the themable elements, it would still not work with the theming engine. Why? I can't tell you. I don't know. SharePoint. So I'm going to quickly show you what all this means. So to make a style sheet themable, not only, of course, does it have to be in a themable directory, but you need special elements, and that's what you see up here. If you add a comment, it looks like a comment, with this replace font or replace color, uh, there's also a replace image. It allows you to tell SharePoint, replace the color with a theme color, replace the font with a theme font based on the, num the naming that we allowed, dark one, light one, dark two, light two, accent one, etc. Uh, you can also use those other shades of the, of, the, of the color, of each color that were shown there underneath the uh, primary colors you selected. I can't get into what theming, well, the power you can do with theming. I, I, 
I would recommend you go do a Google search on uh, the theming engine or theming in SharePoint, and you can learn all about these different tags and how to use it. But effectively, here's the key. You need these tags before any kind of color or image that you may want to have themed. Okay, so we've added all of our assets into SharePoint, uh, except the master page now. So we just last thing we need to do, let's go ahead and get that master page up. I'm going to go back to all files. I'm going to go into underscore catalogs and then master page uh, to get to the master page directory. There is a master pages folder or object in the site objects. I just don't recommend that. I don't find it as, it doesn't work as well for me. I found that sometimes things just don't act the way they want to. So I find that going to the underscore catalogs master page directory is a better place to go. What we're going to see here now is a bunch of ASPX files. Those are all page layouts for a standard or enterprise server installation. And then a bunch of dot master files. Um, normally, you won't see nearly this many files. If you're in foundation, you're not going to see any of the ASPX files. You're only going to see .master files like default.master, minimal.master, and before.master. Uh, that night and day I told you about was installed with um, standard. That just kind of came as part of SharePoint standard. So I mentioned already you don't want to make modifications to your master page or any out-of-the-box file. Um, that would be like the v4.master, a bunch of reasons why. Um, you could if you want, but you don't want to. So instead, what you'd want to do is make your own, which is really easy to do. If you right-click v4.master, you click on copy, then you kind of right-click it again, you click on paste, and now you're going to have your own copy of your own master page, which you can make your own changes to. Very simple, very nice. Now, I've already got a master page ready, so I'm just going to go ahead and copy and paste that into this directory. Copy, and SharePoint, paste. There you go. Okay, so we see that it's already checked out again. Foundation, you wouldn't have to worry about this. I could check it in here. Uh, we don't want to, and the reason why is if you copy and paste something in, or even if you copy and paste my, directly within the folder, my suggestion is that you still go and check everything in and get it published and, and verify the properties are correct for that master page. Uh, this, again, would be for publishing only in the browser. So I'm going to go ahead and show you how to do that, and we'll check the file in there, publish it there, and then we'll apply this master page with all the CSS and images we have to our SharePoint site. So. First, we need to go to the master pages directory. I went to site action site settings under galleries now. You can go to the master pages and page layouts. And if we scroll on down, we'll see that v4 custom inner.master I just added. Great. So the first thing we want to do here is we want to edit the properties or we want to verify the properties are what we want, even if we just copy and paste within SharePoint Designer. We didn't copy a master page from someone else. You want to make sure the content type is a publishing master page. And then you also want to make sure that compatible UI versions is, is 4. Uh, 4 is 2010, 3 is 2007. If you want to change the title, you definitely can, but I'm going to leave it the same, and I'll save that. We now need to check it in and publish it. So I will check in a major version. The reason why we need to check this in is so, again, when we set your site, to, we set the site to use this master page, everyone else can see it. If I didn't do that, the site wouldn't look very good and it wouldn't work very well. So you always want to make sure you just check things in and, and publish it and then improve it. You have to approve anything in the master page directory, uh, master page gallery first. And the reason why is at least you can get a base version of it so that everyone can see it in case you decide to make it live. So we now have all of our assets all up into, for this new branding effort, up into SharePoint. Now we just need to tell SharePoint, use them all. So site actions, site settings. I'm going to show you how to do this in the browser. Foundation folks, sorry, you can't do it this way. Uh, I will show you in the next demo how you would have to go ahead and apply the master page. If you're in foundation, you can go to a site or subsite. You can go to uh, the master page link under look and feel. And we will then have a site master and system master. We can go ahead and set those to that custom inner that we just added. A few gotchas here. A few things you want to think about. One, I already selected here, reset all subsites to inherit the site master page. The reason why is I want to make sure that all subsites also use this master page. Um, this is one of the benefits of publishing over foundation, one of many. Uh, in foundation, a subsite cannot easily inherit the master page from its parent. <clears throat> you can using something like PowerShell or a feature, but there's no really easy way to do it using SharePoint Designer or the browser. If you are using publishing or at least server with publishing enabled, you can do this. So yet another little thing of why you should not be using just foundation. Okay, second thing, that what's the site master page and what's the system master page? Well, the site master page is defined as your custom master page, whereas the system master page is your default master page. 
Your site in general will use the system master page throughout the entire site, definitely for administrative pages. Your site master page or your custom master page is used primarily in a publishing site for your content pages, um, as well as a few little areas here and there. You can tell a specific page to use a specific master page that's beyond this discussion. Um, but you, normally the custom master page or the site master page isn't really used unless you're in a publishing environment. Last thing we want to do is set the alternative CSS URL. Uh, we want to specify it. And again, I have some helper text to tell me what that is. And we'll go ahead and set that. And we'll reset. And there you go. So we can see the, uh, the screen's a little small, but we have a centered fixed width site. We can tell it because we have a gutter on either side. We have a footer. Um, we've added general elements. Now, since our theme was already applied, uh, this has already been themed. I can go ahead and turn the theme off so you can see what that would look like. Uh, normally, I, I would have recommended that you um, that you, you turn the theme off before you apply a custom master page if you already have a theme so you can see the background color is a gray and whatnot. Um, the reason why is because of how SharePoint creates the um, it creates all the style sheets and whatnot when you apply a theme. Since I already had applied the theme, it already had worked before in another demo, so it already worked for us. Normally, though, go ahead and turn a theme off before you apply your own custom master page or your own custom style sheet. And then once it's applied, you can re reapply the theme and everything will look all nice and, and, and pretty like you expected it to. So let's go ahead and quickly reapply that theme so we can see it working. And there we go. Nice tabbed interface, like I said. This is using a little bit of JavaScript, but at least it's styled nice and pretty. Our uh, web parts all looks pretty similar. The left navigation's there. The top navigation has been modified uh, with the look. It hasn't been moved or anything. We just sort of changed the look. Primarily, this is all done using CSS. The master page is very unmodified. We did not do much to this at all. So a quick recap of what we did. Uh, we should have first turned the theme off. Um, we then uploaded all of our assets into the style library. We checked everything in, made sure it was all published. We then added our master page. We showed how to apply the master page. We checked that in and published it, of course. We then showed how to apply the master page uh, to SharePoint to tell SharePoint to actually use it, and we did it using the browser. Foundation folks will show you how to do it using SharePoint Designer in our next demo. So now that what we've seen, we've seen what we can do with uh, simple changes. We've seen what we can do with minimal, um, with minimal expertise in CSS, HTML. What can we do with the full bone effort? What can we do with maximum effort with, you know, time and resources is not important. We can do whatever we want. What, what, what can we actually do with SharePoint? Typically, maximum effort would be for um, when you when your layout, when the site it requires a really custom, unique layout, something that doesn't, only, doesn't look SharePoint, even possibly looks like your public-facing internet site, or if you're creating a new internet site, looks like a normal site. So when people come to your site, they may not, they wouldn't even know it's SharePoint. It's completely custom, completely unique. Uh, you would use this when other options available to us, like just theming or just changing CSS, isn't going to cut it. What I, what I will say is you're going to need experience in HTML, CSS, probably JavaScript. You're going to be using SharePoint Designer, maybe even Visual Studio. Um, you're probably going to be creating custom JavaScript, or someone will be creating custom JavaScript to change site behavior for you. Uh, you're going to need all that for these maximum effort kind of projects. Experience in ASP.NET. I think it's helpful. The reason why is uh, we do know that SharePoint is built on top of the .NET framework. And uh, even though you might not be adding code, just understanding the coding in even a HG, uh, the ASPX page or .master page helps just to know because that is all built on ASP.NET. So knowing it, I think, helps to understand what the coding is doing and why it's able to do it. Uh, I can guarantee you that uh, maximum effort when you really need to make something custom and unique, it's going to require custom master pages or one master page or multiple depending on what your requirements are. You will be creating custom CSS in one or many files. Uh, and most likely, you're going to need to be creating custom page layouts because you're going to be working with publishing. Um, I have seen people try to do some pretty intense stuff with Foundation, and it is possible. You can uh, manipulate the wiki layout to do some amazing stuff, but it is going to be much more difficult if, than if you were just using publishing server like you're supposed to be. 
Um, maximum effort typically is used and it's good for your public facing websites, your new inter internet sites, uh, where you need a site that looks like you want it to look like because it's trying to convey information to your end user rather than say a collaboration site or something. Um, or a heavily stylized internet intranet or extranet site for your fellow employees or your partners, your, your outside vendors, etc. So let's take our story to the end. What we've, you know, the boss saw the, uh, what we did in a week, they liked it, it's the center fixed width, it's great, you know, it's, it's, it's great buy off. They said the content's there that we want, the SharePoint site is exactly everything we want, except now we want it to look just like our corporate internet site. So we want it to look the same. Go to it, here's your team of many people, let's get it done, let's do something completely unique and custom um, that will fit for us. So as before, let's look at the assets that have already been created for us. Uh, we can have our logo, no big deal. Um, we have our images available to us. Here we see we have a whole bunch of images. We'll have scripts available to us. Uh, the scripts that might be added, these are all JavaScript files to do more intense uh, styling of our site. In themable, we have a style sheet. We can see it's actually a lot larger. This is over 1,500 lines of code. And then we have a master page. The master page has already been added to uh, the site, so I don't have it here, but it will be available to you so that you can download it. Um, I've already added all the assets into SharePoint because I wanted to save some time, but I'll quickly just show them here. We have the v4 custom full dot master. A very quick look at this. Um, and I also want to show you for foundation folk. Um, foundation folk, so you can't use the alternative CSS very easily through the browser that I showed you. So what you would be doing is if you wanted to link to your own custom CSS, you will need to modify your master page. Again, even if you're just linking to a CSS, don't modify before that master. Just create your own and add the important tag. And this is the important tag available to you. Now you could just say, well, I want to use the HTML link tag. You can. I would not recommend it. You should use the CSS registration tag. And the reason why is all SharePoint sites, in general, uh, are going to load the core v4.css, which is the core uh, CSS file provided by SharePoint out of the box. It's like 5,000 lines of code, 4,000 lines of code. It's pretty big. You want to make sure that you just override those styles. You don't need to delete them. You just want to overwrite them. So in order to do that, you need to make sure your CSS file loads after core v4. And the CSS registration tag provides that to us with the really nice, cool after tag right here. Uh, another element here for the uh, foundation folk is we see this SPURL tagging. This actually isn't available to you in foundation. You need server to be able to do that. So you would just be creating an absolute reference or a, a, a relative reference to your style sheet, which is really simple. Another quick little review, uh, if you want to link to your own uh, JavaScript files, I suggest using the SharePoint script link tag. Yes, you could use the HTML script tag. Um, I wouldn't. And the reason why, and everything here is pretty standard, uh, the site collection tag actually is available to you in Foundation, so you still can use that. The reason why I recommend using the script link tag is depending on what else is added to your site, maybe custom web parts, et cetera, they could also try to link to the same, um, or try to load the same, or require the same JavaScript files, like, say, the jQuery, um, the, the jQuery library. If you used a script tag, then neither your master page nor the page, that web part would know that the other one was loading it, so they might both try to load the same file using the script tag. Bad idea. Uh, instead, if we use the script link tag available to us, what that does is it helps SharePoint make sure that that script only gets loaded once, which is kind of nice. Uh, the rest of this master page is, is pretty straightforward. Um, I'll let you review it if you want at a later time. Okay, so let's go and look at the style library. Uh, the images, as I said, lots of images have already been added. Scripts, lots of scripts have already been added. And then finally, our style sheet. Um, as I mentioned here, over 1,500 lines of code. So a lot more styling, which is pretty normal in an, in an effort like this. Okay, so what I said is I wanted to show you how to apply the master page using SharePoint Designer if you're in Foundation. And you can do this in, in, in publishing as well. Uh, we have our custom full. It's already been checked in and published. Again, key point if you're in publishing. If we right-click it, we can set this right here in, the, in SharePoint Designer as your default master page or your custom master page. Now, I told you before, I mean, I don't know why SharePoint makes, keeps changing the name, but your default master page is your system master page, and your custom master page is your site master page. 
Uh, if you're in foundation, it really doesn't matter. You're probably not using your custom master page, so you really just need this to be your default master page. If you're in publishing, then any publishing page, any content page, is going to use your custom master page by default. So you'll want to make sure that you set your master pages properly. You may have two in publishing. You may have one for custom. You may have one for default, and that's fine. So if you just go ahead and say, set this as your default master, it will, it will go ahead and take it. So let's go ahead and do that now. Now here's the one catch. By doing this in SharePoint Designer, this only set the master page for the site. Uh, that's not what we want. We want to make sure that our master page is applied to all subsites as well. Foundation, you're kind of out of luck. You can use PowerShell to do it. Uh, or you have to move your master page and all and whatnot to every single subsite. That could be a pain if you have, say, 20, 30 subsites. But let's go ahead and quickly set that in the browser. Now, before we do that, what we want to do, ah, see, it already worked, which is kind of cool, uh, because we already applied the master page, which, was, which is to be expected. But things look broken. There's really good reasons why. Uh, one is we're still linking to the old style sheet, and two, we have a theme applied, which is going to mess things up. So I'm going to go to site theme, and I'm going to turn off the current site theme, because we don't need that. We typically, in production environments with a maximum effort, you're not going to be using a theme. Um, that kind of can be troublesome sometimes. It might be just easier to create a uh, custom style sheet for different color schemes if you need them. Next thing we're going to do is go to master page. So what I want to do here is I'm just going to tell the master page has already been set here, but all the subsites won't have gotten it. What we're doing here is we're saying go ahead and reset all subsites to use this master page. And I'm going to turn off the old link to our CSS file. So there we go. Much more pretty, much more what we expect. Let's go back to the home page and let's see what we got here. The screen's too small, but this is a centered fixed width site again. Uh, so if the screen was really large, the browser was really large, you start to see some gutters and whatnot. We can see things have really changed here. Um, we've moved the search bar, we've moved where the top navigation is. It still has the same content, we just moved it. Uh, we can see that web parts now have a, a more unified box look to them. We have our tab interface, which looks all nice and simple. If we go to a team collaboration site, we'll see that the team site has also gotten the same exact design applied to it. Same header and footer. We can see again that all of our web parts and lists have the same look and feel to it. This is exactly what we'd be thinking with a, with, with a, a custom site, a custom layout. It would be something very unique, very, very different, very trying to take a lot of the SharePoint out of SharePoint and make it look like everything else, like, like something else, like something that's uh, much more custom. So quick common mistakes that are made when we're trying to make these maximum effort kind of projects is one, we start breaking functionality of SharePoint. You've got to be careful. Typically, that'd be like the ribbon. Uh, people just, you know, they'll break how the ribbon works. Um, another thing that might happen is that when you work with a centered fixed width site, you don't consider what will happen when you have li wide lists. So let's look at team collaboration. If I change this list to have 20 columns, that's not going to fit. I mean, it's going to break the centered fixed width. How do we deal with that? And that's something that's beyond this discussion, but it's something to think about when you're making your design is make sure that it will work within SharePoint or that you've taken steps to take care of layout issues that SharePoint might try to break. So as a quick recap, we created our own custom master page. We then moved it into the master page gallery. We created our own custom style sheet. Again, all of our own standard files and style library. We copied everything in, or you know, in your case, you probably would have built it in SharePoint Designer. We checked everything, published it. We then went into SharePoint Designer, and we set the master page there in the master page gallery by right-clicking the master page. Um, I recommend normally you wouldn't do that. You would go ahead and use the browser to do it, because that way you can make sure that all subsites inherit your master page. They're, all your subsites will use your new master page. You may not want to do that, of course, but if you do, you want that available to you. So let's look at limits. Are there any limits? Well, my opinion, no, there are no limits. SharePoint can look like and do anything you want. It's an extremely powerful platform. It can do anything, really. It, it, it really can. If you don't believe me, a uh, site I recommend, topsharepoint.com. There are thousands of examples of their public-facing websites, but I think it will give you a good idea of what you can do with SharePoint. Um, there, you will never think that those sites were done in SharePoint, in my opinion. Some quick examples of that. Well, we've got what I think is one of the best technology demonstrators of SharePoint is this AdditurkAirport.com. Um, none of these examples were done by me or Pixamel. These are just good sites I thought were nice. Uh, what's really cool about this is that, one, it has no SharePoint in it, as far as I can tell from the look. 
All those nine gray boxes in the middle, the boxes with the gray headers, are all draggable, so you can use jQuery. It's using jQuery to change the site behavior. Pretty impressive. Lower left-hand corner, there's a choose a choose a theme link. If you click on that, uh, you can then modify the theme of the site on the fly. Great technology demonstrator. Uh, very impressive stuff that you can do with SharePoint. Another example, this is Volvo's site, or was their site. Uh, again, I mean, it's a good-looking site that it could be on any platform. No SharePoint in it. It looks, it looks really nice. Uh, this is a lighting company. Uh, this site I like because it actually, to me, has more of the, the, the WordPress kind of blog look. It has the big rotating banner at the top, three major boxes underneath that, a big footer. It's kind of the new look that we have. There's nothing SharePoint in this. If you go to the site you, uh, and, and review the, the uh, top navigation, you'll see that there's some really nice mega menus that are very well done. The only thing SharePoint into this site that I can see is that in the search bar, that little search icon, the little uh, magnifying glass, that, that to me is still SharePointy. But besides that, this is a not, I mean, this is amazing things you can do with SharePoint. Yes, these are all public facing internet sites, but you can still take all these elements and turn them into an internet site or even your team collaboration sites and still utilize a lot of these elements if you have the desire to or the need to. So I've got some uh, tricks and tips for you. One, if you're going to start doing changes to your master page, um, I suggest you start using, you use a starter master page. Uh, the v4.master is difficult to use. It has a lot of extra stuff that you might not need. And uh, get some help from someone else. The, the most popular one that I know of that um, has been around for quite a while is the Starter Master Page by Randy Driscoll. Uh, great master page. He's created a couple of them, one for foundation, one for publishing, another one for, I think, meeting sites and whatnot. Great thing. Uh, the next one is just the Essentials by Heather Solomon. Uh, she created the uh, base master page, I believe. They're called in 07, and then in 2010, she created this. The premise behind her master page or her essentials is she just took the V4 and kind of stripped out a lot of the junk, added a few little things in to make it a little easier to use, and added some commenting. A third one, it's one I created called Jumpstart Branding. Uh, what I did there was, the theory I had was I wanted a V4 master that just took out all the stuff you normally wouldn't need, commented it like crazy so that you actually knew what all the, all the elements were trying to do, um, and properly hid things that, that were needed in the master page but you might not need. I also created a simple fixed width, centered fixed width site because that's very popular. There's lots of gotchas in that, and so I created a, a master page that could help you on any the team collaboration of uh, wiki site blog up to a publishing site. You could use that master page to have your centered fixed width site, or at least a, a, a starting place, a, um, a jumping off place to create a centered fixed width site. There's also some solutions in there for deploying it, but that's beyond this discussion. There's a really great CSS reference chart that Heather Solomon created. Uh, she did this for 03, SharePoint 07, and SharePoint 2010. What she did was she went through the core v4.master and documented all of the elements, all of the styles and what they do with nice pictures showing what they're actually affecting. Uh, very impressive, worth looking at, worth kind of reviewing to get an idea of what that is. But there's a lot of styles. It's a very long document, so it can be a little intimidating because it's a little long, but it's definitely a good resource to have. Um, lots of good books out there as well. I highly recommend the top two. I think they're good to have. They're on my desk. Um, they're great reference points. If you're going to be using SharePoint Designer, which you most likely will, I think having a good book is, avail is, is nice to have again on your desk. There's plenty of them out there. This is one I like. Um, moving on. So I said this before. I'm going to say it again. I just, this is one of those things I want you to please walk away with. Always make your versions of your own files, never overwrite these, the out-of-the-box files that SharePoint provides, provides for you. So I've already told you some reasons why. Uh, one reason why is you just don't want to um, change what was provided for you out of the box. In case you make any kind of mistake or whatnot, you want to be able to go back to what SharePoint had, uh, what SharePoint provided. Definitely with the core v4.css, uh, your whole site, your whole server, your whole farm is going to be using that style sheet. So you really don't want to make any changes to that. The most important reason why, if that doesn't convince you, is uh, when patches and whatnot come out with from, for uh, SharePoint, which of course they will, uh, there might be changes made to those out-of-the-box files that SharePoint will make, the update process will make, without any care to what you might have done to that file. And you'll lose anything you changed. Very bad idea. Extremely bad practice. Best practices, always create your own files. I showed you how. It's way too easy. There's no reason why you should ever get caught doing that. Please don't do it. The next thing, this is the trick that uh, all brand new folk I know use in some way. 
It's the IE Developer Toolbar or Firebug for Firefox. Chrome and Safari also have similar tools. Now, if you don't know what it is, I'm going to show you what it is. If you do have it, you do know what it is, maybe I can help teach you a few extra things. So, my last demo of this session, I want to quickly show you how you use those developer toolbars, um, how you actually use them to help you with your branding site. Now, I'm going to show you how to use Firebug because I think it's better. Uh, I developer toolbar is fine. A lot of people, that's all they can use. And it works very similarly to Firebug. It's just I, I prefer Firebug myself. Quickly, though, if we just see what um, the developer toolbar is, um, if you don't have it, you can go to Google, type in IE developer toolbar. You can then go and quickly download it and put it in your browser. What that makes available to you is a tools option, and in that you've got your F12 developer tools. Uh, what that does is it pins a toolbar to the bottom of your screen, which is, I think, a good place to have it. Um, and you've got an element selector, which this is very similar to what Firefox has, so I'll show you how to use an element selector and Firefox. So let's go over to Firefox. We'll reload this page to get the newest design. If you don't have Firebug, open up Firefox, go to Google, do a search for Firebug. It'll quickly load you up with the Firebug extension. You can download it, install it, and once it's installed, you'll then have this nice little bug up in the upper right hand corner. So if you go ahead and click that, Firebug shows up. Very similar to ILE Developer Toolbar. It has the same look, basically. Same kind of tabs. You've got your element selector, which is what's your most important piece. Um, and then you've got your code to the left and you've got styles to the right. So what, let's say as a, as a demo here, what, what happened is our, our boss saw, this, saw the site, they liked it, said really, really great. All we want to quickly do though is change the top navigation from being blue. We'd like them all, all the links to be white. Well, 1,500 lines of CSS, I don't remember where I, where I made that change. So how are we going to go find it? Well, you dig in the HTML code, you can go searching for it. I, good luck. I, it's, it's kind of a, a pain to do. Instead, if we can do something like Firebug, we click on the element selector. We can now move our mouse, and as we move our mouse, we get a blue box around the current element that's being shown in the lower right-hand corner. And in the lower left-hand corner, we're seeing the HTML that's defining that. So if we go all the way up to administration and click on it, we'll see that the span that has the word administration has been selected. We can now use the styles on the right to go ahead and find where we can change that color, where that color is being defined for that text. What I like about Firefox over, or Firebug over IE Developer Toolbar is, you know, we, we know that CSS is cascading. It has multiple styles that get applied on top of each other. Uh, in Firebug, the last, the, the last most applied styles are on top. So it's pretty easy to quickly see what was applied last rather than in, in, in IE Developer Toolbar out of the box. Uh, what's applied first is up on top, which means I'm I scroll to the bottom, I don't like doing that. So what we're going to look for <clears throat> is any place that a color might be defined. If we scroll down, we'll quickly see, aha, here's a color. So we have a color applied to it. This is, uh, you know, this is how the color is probably being applied. If we mouse over this in Firebug, we get a little color swatch of any color. This is another thing I like about Firebug, is that we get to see a color. We can see, oh, hey, that's the right color. That's most likely the style that's applying, is applying the color to the administration uh, word or the text up top. Uh, all these different toolbars allow you to make changes in line, which is really nice. So I can change it to white and say, hey, that's it. That's exactly what I want. Uh, I didn't change anything permanently. If I refresh this screen, that's going to disappear. <clears throat> but we can see that if we want to make, uh, if we made this change to the style, wherever it may be, uh, then it will most likely apply the change that our boss requested. What I like about Firebug, moving on with why I like Firebug, is that it not only tells us where the style is being applied, what file, it's in the styles.css, but it also tells us the line number. So if we open up styles.css in SharePoint Designer, we go to line 662, we will most likely find this, uh, this property here. We can then go and find the color style, and we can change it to white, save it, we're good to go. Really nice. Now let's say that uh, this style wasn't here, and most likely that means that this other color was being applied for the um, <clears throat> for the color of the of the font. And it's only in the core before there is no uh, there is no styles of CSS style for this text. No problem. All we need to do then is copy and paste that tag into our own style sheet and provide it our own color now. And that works because we know that our style sheet gets loaded after the core v4. So that's the power of Firebug. I developed toolbar, etc. cetera. Uh, very impressive. I showed you 1%. Another little trick I want to show you, a little thing, is if I, I moused over the anchor tag, if you see there's the light blue um, background over administration, that's telling us the tag that we selected. But you'll see that there's purple to the right and underneath it. 
that's padding that's being added. It's one of the things I like about Firebug as well is that it shows the size of the element you've currently got selected. So we can see that we've got padding to the right and underneath it. So if we needed to change how the layout of the text was, uh, we might know where the element is. The IE Developer Toolbar doesn't quite show that, and I really like the coloring. If you see something yellow, it means that uh, it's margins. So it's really nice that they help color code uh, where different elements are. I've only showed you 1% of Firebug. Uh, there's so much more in this, but this is probably where you're going to spend most of your time when, when you're working with uh, SharePoint and branding SharePoint is using the, some, one of these developer toolbars to find an element that you need to change and then going into your style, seat, style sheet and making the change. I find this is a lot more useful than the uh, CSS reference guide by Heather Solomon. It's great work what she did, but sometimes it could be just as uh, difficult to go find the right style there than it is to just load up Firebug, go find the element, just mouse over the element you want, find the style, boom, there you go. Easy to change. So a summary of what we've talked about so far. Branding SharePoint, it definitely can be done. Not only that, it should be done. It's easy to do. Even if you just add your logo and you start from there, please do. Um, let's, speak, let's start making our SharePoint sites look like ourselves, not like SharePoint. Um, we, it's not hard. We can do it. Um, the level of customizations that uh, you're going to put into us will probably be based on your goals, your requirements, the time they have available to, us, to you, any kind of experience that your team may or may not have, uh, the experience you may have yourself. Experience is definitely helpful, so if you've already done something, of course, it'll make it a lot easier. <clears throat> but even if you don't have experience, don't be overly intimidated by it. It's still possible to figure this stuff out. There's lots of resources out there, including the books I've talked about, including the, uh, the starter master pages I talked about. There's the tech net boards. There's bulletin boards. There's all sorts of areas you can go to to get help. Lots of blogs out there. Uh, my favorite search is to go to Google, type in SharePoint 2010, then my question, and almost always someone has try to do what, I've, what I'm trying to do and they'll give me at least some guidance or ideas of how, how to accomplish the, the task in front of me when I'm trying to brand a site. Um, lastly, what I suggest here is before you get started, you really want to have a plan. I, I don't suggest you just go into SharePoint and just start trying to brand it with whatever your thoughts may be. That doesn't mean you wouldn't take this demo, this, this whole uh, some of the demo files that I provided, throw it into SharePoint and play around with it. That's fine, but when you really start to try to brand your SharePoint site, even if you're just applying your logo, it's good to have a plan. It's good to have an idea of what it is you're trying to do. Um, that way you can focus on the task at hand and you can, you, you can only spend the time trying to get that particular branding element completed. Uh, it's easy to waste time within SharePoint because it is tricky. There are definitely a lot of gotchas when branding SharePoint. Before we wrap up right here, uh, I do want to discuss what we didn't discuss, which is kind of funny, I know. But uh, there's lots of things in branding I either glossed over or I, I didn't discuss. And I do want you to be aware that you most likely will be running into these issues if you're going to get into a branding effort with SharePoint. Um, the lots are, again, lots of resources. You can go to Google to learn about this stuff. You can talk to me. You can go to blogs, et cetera. We did not discuss the requirements gathering process in, in too much detail. Uh, it's very important. There's whole sessions dedicated to just how do you gather the requirements of your SharePoint branding initiative. Uh, we didn't discuss at all about building a mock-up of your design, say something in like Photoshop and working with say marketing or uh, your bosses to decide what you want your SharePoint site to look like. Uh, lots of ways you can do that and it's kind of not even SharePoint, it's, it's sort of how you might decide how you want your site to look in general. Once you have a mock-up, a lot of people like to prototype that design, that mock-up, uh, without using SharePoint at all. They'll just use you know, a standard HTML editor, and they want to create a functional site using the design that was applied without having to worry about SharePoint. That way we can get buy-off on from uh, what, for usability buy-off, make sure that the end user likes the experience of working with the site and it works the way they want. Uh, plenty of pros for doing it, I understand. I typically do not personally do that, um, but that's just because... Once you get to know SharePoint, uh, it's, it, it, it isn't that hard to make it work within SharePoint. I also find that moving HTML into SharePoint can be uh, sometimes tricky and it can break things that you might not have intended. So it's up to you, but definitely prototyping is very popular and I, I would recommend it for a lot of people. I think it really works well to get the buy-off of how the site is going to be used and how the user experience is. Uh, I kept talking about different site templates, but I didn't really go into what the differences are between site templates. Say, um, 
a publishing site, or a team collaboration site, uh, a my site, or search. Uh, they're all very different. Uh, they do have different requirements, and they do have, in my opinion, different theories of what you can do, can't do, or how you might want to go about trying to do something. Um, that's a session all in itself is the, how to brand different, different uh, aspects of SharePoint. But just be aware that definitely branding different site templates uh, can be can just take different time and effort. And lastly, we didn't talk at all about taxonomy and governance and how they do affect branding. Uh, the content that you're going to have on the site and how you're going to organize it is very important. Uh, and then who has permissions, what, when, where, and how may also change how you, have, how, how you actually end up branding your site and creating a, a user interface for it. That's it. I appreciate your time. I know this was really fast. I do apologize. I had a lot I really wanted to cover, um, but again, this recording will be made available to you so that you can download not only the presentation, but a whole recording of this. You can watch me do all the demos as many times as you want. You can also download, um, the, it's a zip file of all of the demo files I showed you so that you can actually practice yourself, upload them, see how I might have done something, see how, that, how the different assets were pulled together. The easiest way to reference any of this material uh, is to go to my blog, blog.pixelmail.com slash Eric Overfield. You will find uh, a link to, uh, as I said, all those files, including this presentation. I've tried to make it as easy as you can because, again, I think that no good, uh, no, no good session on branding SharePoint is complete without showing you the major different levels available to you. And I do think the Firebug is so important that I really want to make sure that you saw how to use such a developer toolbar. Again, thank you very much. I appreciate your time. If you have any questions, I'll please, I'll be more than happy to answer them. Um, thanks again and have a great day.